Hi, good evening, everybody. We are good evening. We are here to start the April 29th school committee meeting, 7:32, and we'll start off with approval of the minutes of the regular session of April 22nd. I make a motion to approve the minutes from April 22nd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, move on to student communications. I see no students out there. So if Stephen comes, we'll let him go out of order. Uh, Dot, any other communications? No. Okay. Five are questions and comments from the audience. Any comments or questions from the audience? Six, moving right along. <laughs> Uh, 6.1 is here an update on the status of the private fundraising activities for the high school fields project. Um, as many of you know, we were lucky enough to um, receive an 80% approval uh, vote at town meeting on Monday night to move forward with phase two of the fields project. And um, part of our ma mandate that we received at special town meeting in October of 2011 was to make it a private public partnership. And um, there have been several efforts going on. And I know, John, you received some funds? I have received some funds, yes. Okay. Um, the funds collected today total $27,500. <clears throat> Those are actually in hand. Right? In, in hand, hand yes. Yeah, collected and, and deposited into the fields account. Okay, so those are mostly bleacher? Those were the um, campaign, uh, donate a seat campaign. Okay, great. Would you like to come forward, Warren, or yeah, wait? Um, sure. The, yeah, come forward. <laughs> I'd love to come forward. <laughs> <laughs> and we love to hear from you. So. Yeah. so I'm Warren Powell, 147 Main Street. Um, uh, congratulations, um, everyone who worked so hard. Um, on the, the school committee and the school department to, um, to get a, a, an outstanding turnout um, at town meeting. 80% vote um, is a huge, um, uh, it's a huge number and it, um, I think it, it really does prove um, how much the town got behind this project and how much the town got behind the diligence that went into this project. Um, so I think that's extremely important. Um, what we found uh, since then is I think um, we've informed you uh, that, um, that we have uh, raised a certain number that was sent to you last, uh, last school committee meeting, uh, j just before town meeting. Since then, we've received a number of phone calls um, <laughs> believe it or not, there are some people that were on the fence and did not believe that this project would actually <laughs> go through. Um, but a lot of people have come up um, and are willing to pledge. I've sent them the, um, the uh, <coughs> pledge levels that um, Andy had worked on so diligently um, and put together and got approved by you. So those are with uh, a number of our donors right now. So we know that there's more, more money to come in. Um, and I guess I'd hate to characterize that right now um, without uh, first having a chance to speak to everyone about what uh, their level of interest is, but um, I know it's significant. Okay. And um, I know you are waiting to hear a little bit from us in regard to um, our donation policy, and I know Carol has done some research over the weekend. So, um, so that would be fantastic yep. if, uh, if we could get some, uh, I, I've read through the, the, um, the naming policies and all the, that, and I can read it seven different ways. Um, and not being a lawyer and not totally understanding the shape um, and also the, um, really the, the timing of all those developments. I don't know that though, that committee when they sat down they took into consideration fields, and they took into consideration 
um, you know, the, the foul poles and things like that. I don't necessarily think they took all of it into consideration. It was more about large buildings and, and dedications. Uh, I think this is a little bit different. And again, depending upon how you read the wording, it could be, one could read the, the wording to be that certain things um, could be donated and therefore named. Um, so I'd love to get a better feeling for that because people have um, specifically requested um, information about that. That sounds great. Thank you so much for being a wonderful partner. Well, thank you. School system. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm just looking for Warren's letter that he delivered. Six point two is to. Um, well, I don't know if we're going to accept any donations tonight. We have. No, I think it's a, it's a matter of talking about. You have the procedures right. that are uh, related to our policy, and um, really have to think about whether or not um, gifts over a certain amount uh, can have to be accepted by the school committee. And so it's a matter of deciding. It's twenty five uh, twenty five thousand. Uh, or you could delegate that uh, acceptance. I think the, the bigger question is to give some thought, and we don't have to do it tonight, about whether you simply want to say that you accept as a uh, lump all of the donations that have been um, made to support the fields project, or whether we want to, when we know all of them individually, individually accept each of those over um, the 25000 Okay. The policy does say that a principal or, or I can accept things up to 25000 but anything more than that you would have to. So we might want to have some of our legal minds think about what's the best way to proceed on that so that when we do vote, it will be either one lump sum or one, one vote that would cover all of the donations or whether we, there's some merit in wanting to separate them out, not necessarily by name, but by amount. Okay. So in your packages, you have um, the acceptance, the procedures for acceptance of this and major fundraising, and that's something that you guys will have to noodle over next meeting. Any comments or questions? I guess I would just ask Don, from her perspective or John's perspective, um, do you see any be benefits of doing it one way or the other? Um, I think the easiest thing would be to lump them all together. On the other hand, um, it may be people would think it would be cleaner if we did them uh, one by one. What we don't know is how many individual ones there are going to be above the 25,000, and maybe we'd make a different decision if we, if we knew that was 100 as opposed to 10, something like that. Um, I, I, would, I would sort of echo that. I mean, depending on the volume, I mean, if it's 10, I think we could read the 10, provided they wanted to be known and the committee could accept it. Otherwise, um, you know, we could group them. You don't have to formally accept the things that are um, in the, uh, the town's fund, the consolidated gift account, because you set that up right. for a certain purpose. Right. Uh, but there aren't any in that that are individually over 25,000 right. at this point anyway. And we will assure that every person that donates money gets a letter from us thanking them for their donation. We haven't had a lot of experience in this area, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, no. I, if, 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 I, if I could, I, I do think we're going to need to move on this um, quickly um, because there's a sequence of events that's going to have to happen in a short period of time if we're going to start construction on the schedule that we've talked about, mm -hmm. which is about five weeks from now. Um, so getting the budget and financing amount finalized so that we can be in a position to um, award a bid, bids, um, you know, uh, very shortly. And it might be something that we need to even, well, we, the school committee as of next week needs to uh, even consider having a special meeting to do. Uh, because the school committee meets on the 6th and not again until the 20th. And 
if it can't be done next week for any number of reasons, the 20th, I think, would be too late. Um, so that's something to, to consider uh, as well. Is that something policy? I mean, no. Carol, no. Um, in terms of what, deciding on. Yeah, how you want to. Um, I don't know. It seems like it's pretty general from what we're talking about um, in okay. terms of. I, I mean, it, you know, it could fit on the agenda for next week, but of course, by next week, we may not know the, the, all of the donations either. So, um, we'll have a lion's share. Mm -hmm. so and is that a question we can follow up with Warren? Warren, do you have any idea in terms of timetable? Is, um, it, will, is a week going to do it for some people, or are they looking at a longer period of time? Yeah, I, I guess uh, let me answer that with a question. Um, because I, I, I'd like to understand if, if what I've been saying is indeed correct. Um, because what I, what I have told people, even some of the current donors, is that um, donations can be um, can now be spread across two fiscal years. You're right. So 2013 mm -hmm. and 2014, we'd be able to accept donations. Um, so. If you're talking about pledges by the end of next week, I, I believe that that is possible. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would like to have an understanding of, um, you know, again, what what potential naming rights we could we could have um, for larger donors. Okay. Okay. And you're right. I mean, that's uh, the understanding that we had with Ted. We had to have the pledges, and then the funds can come in. Over a period of years. However, if it were more than just a couple, we we need to have the funds in this year in order to sufficient funds in order to award. Mm -hmm. So that um, if there were one or two that needed to be spread out, we could probably accommodate that. But well, I don't think we have to have the money. I think we need to have some sort of mechanism, whether it's a um, a commitment in writing, whether it's a line of credit, line whether of credit, it's a, right. a, a letter right. of credit, right. rather, right. rather right. whatever right. it is, we need to have some some infrastructure in place which represents the amount of money we need in order to award right. the contract. Right. But I'm simply saying that yeah. if there were a lot of large donors and each one said, "I'll do it over a two-year period," that can create a uh, a problem for us yeah. in terms of a letter of credit. <clears throat> so. I think we just need to coordinate that and discuss it in kind of a short time frame and figure out what that's going to entail. Right. It, it's, it's more to go back to people that have already said yes, to let them say yes again for another year, um, because they didn't know that that was a possibility. And I didn't bring that up up front because I didn't know it was a possibility. So I've gone back to a number of people that have, uh, that have done to say, uh, do you, are you interested in coming back in 2014 and pledging again. An additional amount would be no problem, but if we were to take the existing, <laughs> if we were to take the existing yeah. amounts and, and they That's all got split into two okay. years, that presents a challenge to being able to get the uh, verification that Ray's talking about to be able to award. So. So, so, that I, so that I understand. So has the town said that if there is a, a legally binding commitment, memorandum of understanding, whatever the right terminology is, that the town would advance money against pledges yeah. or not? It, it's not so much that they advance, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's, not, no. it's not so much that they would advance money, but um, the, the way the ledger works is you can almost deficit spend and you don't have to account for the money until the end of the next fiscal year. So we actually have an extra year to, to as long as we have some documentation which evidences the ability to pay or the promise to pay or the pledge or whatever it is in, in various forms, um, you know, the cash doesn't even have to be in hand and, in, and, it's, and it's essentially uh, just a ledger, um, you know, transfer as far as the town side is concerned. And when we say another year, we're talking about a year that would expire before July 1 of 2014 in other words within the FY so it's a year from now but it's still within the FY 14 
budget. So it's not another, it's not another fiscal year. It just everything has to be reconciled by June thirtieth of fourteen. Well, we wouldn't have any ability to deficit spend be uh, okay. beyond that. Okay, that's that's what, that's how I knew it also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's move on. We have um, six point three is to review the budget for the proposed high school field project. Um, at your places, John has prepared a, a budget for you to take a look at. Yeah, um, <clears throat> what, what I put together is I put together a project budget for um, really the two bidders that uh, uh, for the field project. Um, so in the, in the two columns, you see bidder one and bidder two. Um, and then I've included in this, this budget the uh, alternate one for lights for both bidders. And um, the concession building right now, well, I've included the, the amount for the lowest bidder, or, or $674,000. Um, the other alternates in these bids for alternates, I've, I've included in here alternates two through five, okay? And what I've done is I've excluded the ornamental fence in which was alternate six. So I've taken alternates two through five, which is um, the foul poles and the batting tunnels and the dugouts and the scoreboards. Um, then I put a number in here right now for project management uh, th that's um, based on existing contracts. But you know, if you look over to the right, there's a little breakout box there because um, I, I think that maybe we want to include a few extra project management dollars. Um, you know, at, at a minimum. The and then. Um, looking at the total, I've got a contingency in this budget right now, we'll say 5%. Yeah. And down when we look at soft costs and stuff, I have uh, a, a column here or a placeholder really for legal expenses, whether we should include some legal expenses in this budget or not. Um, soft costs for being interest, I've calculated on the second side of this, on the back side of this page, is sort of a bond model or a cost model. So that's where these numbers came from. And um, the bond issuance costs of about $42,000. Um, putting that, those numbers all together for bid in one or bid or two, you see the amounts there. Um, when we look at the um, base bond uh, for the, for the um, base bond funding by the town, for Article 8 was $3,765,180. The additional bond costs um, for the second article, Article 9, was $454,000. Okay, and then we also have CPC Article 11 of $50,000. So we have cumulative funding from the town votes in the amount of $4,269,180. Um, now, taking a look at the base estimated costs for both bidders, um, and we see that you know the project funding balance before fundraising, um, bidder one the um, the the need is about 1.23 1.2 million dollars, um, 1.123320, and for bidder two it's 1,342,075. As you go down here, I've got the area now. Before I had heard numbers for lights and HSP donations and the big green and the seats. Today, I've collected revenues of $27,500, just seats. So you only see seat revenue in here because what I think we need to do is find out exactly what those other numbers are for sure and, and we could put them in. Um, so total fund raise, uh, raising sources that I have right now is um, $27,500 collected. You know what? I forgot to pass this in last school committee meeting. It's the letter from Warren on the Hingham Sports Partnership. Mm -hmm. So we should so that add that to the official records. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll yeah. Yep. That, and, and that's what I've set up the model so we can just, you know, sure. we can plug in the numbers so we can see exactly where we are. Um, so looking at the difference, it, when we project all of this out, the difference between the two bids really is $108,255. Now also on this additional considerations, like in the bid, um, uh, granite curbing is, is shown as being done by others, and I believe that's a job that the, the road will actually be done in fiscal 15, so I haven't included it above. 
and we should probably, you know, I put this out as another consideration out there because I think during the 15th cycle we'll want to work with the town to make sure that that amounts are included in the town budget for the, uh, when, they, when they do that street over. Okay. So, and as I said on the back, it's just a model uh, of the bond progression. And as it's set up so that uh, it becomes a sheet that we can actually work with to determine the funding that we need. Thanks, John, for putting this together. Does anybody have any comments or questions? One comment. So you mentioned legal. And we can cover this now. We can cover it in the 48-hour item. But I do think we should uh, consider seriously uh, engaging Project Council for this. Um, we had one on the e-school project. We have one on the middle school project. Um, and there invariably is a need for legal counsel. Um, we've already had consultation on a couple of uh, issues that have arisen with Bob Garrity of Garrity and Nisley. If you don't know Bob, Bob served as the chair of the DPW Building Committee, is probably the preeminent construction law lawyer in Massachusetts. Um, also served on, on building committees in the past on the high school project, um, was project counsel for East School, and currently serves as project counsel for the middle school project. Um, so my recommendation would be that we uh, vote to retain Bob and his firm uh, to serve as project counsel. Um, what do you, have, do you have a suggested number as to what that might be? Uh, what we, I'll just give you an example. On the middle school, uh, we don't have a set retainer. That's a different animal because there was kind of a, a number um, figured into the budget that was MSBA driven mm -hmm. to, a, to a certain extent. Um, the arrangement we have with Bob on the middle school is a, a, an hourly. Um, it's a pretty low hourly um, comparatively. Um, no upfront retainer and speak of the devil Bob Garrity just walked in and we were just discussing the prospect of retaining project counsel for this um, so um, um, I think it's uh, it's something that's uh, necessary for us right I would suggest that we um, do the action under the 48 sure. since this agenda item was not in sure action. I just want to mention because Bob uh, sure. John did bring up legal and there was a question mark so I think mm -hmm. it's something yep yeah, I agree and um, Mr. Garrity and Dad, I think neither one of you signed in. So if you guys, whoever just walked in, could sign in, that would be great. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions on the budget? So we're a little bit over. Um, a lot of it, I think, uh, when I was talking to Bill about it, a lot of it is the drainage. We can, uh, you know, there's a lot of drainage in here means the fields are going to drain beautifully um, and some additional you know possible fundraising prospects I think now once we have uh, a, a field that's been vetted a project that's been vetted by the town and with an 80 percent approval at town meeting um, there will be some donors who will be more than willing to step up and contribute to a winning uh, a winning project which brings us to 6.5, which discuss, um, or 6.4, to uh, ensure alignment between the proposed budget and the available funding. So, um, Paul and Emily, you guys need to sign in when you walk in. <laughs> Is there anybody not named Falvey sitting in the room? <laughs> Dad's a Chambers. Um, so, I don't, you know, I, I think we've kind of, we've heard some strategies. I mean, there's... Um, the building could get looked at. Uh, yeah, as soon as we know what degree of alignment is needed, if any, um, you know, we may need to take uh, some action. But certainly, some suggestions would be we could go out to bed on the building. Uh, again, we could look at uh, some changes um, in that through a change order process. We could look at these bid alternates, which right now are included in the in the total, but. Uh, you might have second thoughts on those. So there are a number of different strategies you could um, be thinking about. We thought it was important that um, you give some thought to those so that when we are ready to make an award, um, we will have the detail that we need. But right now, there are the two missing pieces, yeah. the, the total cost 
which will reflect whatever the bid award is and the um, total funding availability which will reflect at this point the knowns are, are there for the from the town and CBC so that will reflect the um, the fundraising so as soon as we can get those two things closer uh, well more definite I should say then we'll know where we are in terms of what degree of alignment if any there needs to be and they've you've ha you have the bid sheets right do they mm -hmm. have they gotten the bid sheets with the alternates broken out uh, they were in the original, you know, the original budget sheets, but we haven't looked at them for a while. Okay, so you'll need to um, look at those. So we can get those to you. That's a good point yeah. to, to just oh, get yeah, out that, right. uh, that yeah. list of the uh, alternates. I think um, I, I know I emailed it to Dennis. Did you, yeah. Yeah, so everybody yeah. should get a copy. Yeah, absolutely. Copy of those and, you know, foul poles can be an alternate, dugouts can be an alternate. I'm just trying to see if I have mine here. Carol, have we heard from anybody who would be any organizations who might be interested in covering some of those? Yeah, I've heard we've heard from some. Soccer would like to be involved with striping a field, and mm -hmm. um, I think Little League expressed some interest in oh, foul please. poles. Okay. Um, so there's. So we, so we could maybe remove some of those items, feeling reasonably confident that they will be donated. Right. And there's that whole list, Andy, you put together yeah. of, you know, suggested yeah. items that uh, donations could be directed towards. I think the big thing is Warren said and you alluded to, now that we have this accepted, mm -hmm. now this is like the second push again. Right. And people, mm -hmm. now that's a reality, our only, our unfor the unfortunate thing is we want to sign documents soon and start building right. soon. And mm -hmm. right. that's, the, that's the challenge right now. Well, you know, I mean, the other option is, and I, I even think, you know, hard about saying this, you could throw out all the bids and start from scratch if you want to. I mean, if you want to, if, you know, it's an option. You don't have to do it just on the building. You can do it with the fields. Well, not exactly. We can't just rebid just because we don't we like the to, numbers. We'd have to change, have to change something. It. Yeah, we'd have to alter the project. Right. Okay. So in terms of, I, I, I guess that in terms of the, <coughs> the fields, portion of this, not the concession building portion. Um, uh, some, since when I was here for the concession building, we had, there was some, I uh, had some discussion, Bill was involved, and you seemed to, and the feeling seemed to be that the fields part of this was, not to use, no pun intended, but in the ballpark, in terms of that we wouldn't, if we were to go, uh, and in order to get it down, we would obviously have to go out and rebid and delete something or make some significant changes to get it down <coughs> significantly. Right. No, that's true. Yeah. So if that's the case, unless we have, unless there's some interest in doing that uh, to make some significant changes in terms of reducing that scope, uh, if we went forward, if we decided that, that we were going to, ex you know, that that wasn't an option and we were going to go forward with the fields, in essence, the way it was scoped out to begin with, uh, we would have enough money in the budget mm -hmm. between what was approved and even a relatively small amount of the fundraising to go ahead with that bid at this point. Correct. You That's do. That's correct, right, mm -hmm. John, From mm -hmm. in yeah. terms of your spreadsheet, if I understand it here? Mm -hmm. Between what t the town has already authorized and the, and the, uh, and the CPA and, and so forth, we wouldn't need a whole lot of additional fundraising to go ahead with that piece of the bid. Right. Okay. Right. Bill, did you want to say something? You have to come up to the, sure. sorry. I just Warren's all the way back there, so I don't make him stand up every time. And uh, good evening. Bill Seymour, the consultant to the town for Gale Associates. Um, three quick points regarding Dennis's comments. Uh, number one is that in order to go back out to bid for the field project or the building project for that matter, you have to make a substantive change. You can't, as bids are exposed, you can't put the project back out to bid because you want to look for a better number. Number two, inherent in making a substantive change, depending on how you define that, you're, you're then starting uh, the permits at that point become, uh, if it's a substantive change, then it's not a minor uh, change to the permit. So you have to go through that cycle again. Number three, and this is the one that I think is perhaps the most important, is that we can't think of this in terms of making an award several weeks before anticipated construction is to commence. Um, because three of the items, and I could probably think of more, but lighting and seating 
and the carpet are all specialty fabrications that are custom made for your project. And the queue, particularly as it relates to, to seating, uh, is, is fairly long. So uh, implicit in that is that we really knew if, if the schedule is to be adhered to as it's been published, we have to make an award for the field aspect of the job pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. PDQ. With regard to the building, and we've talked a little bit about some value engineering uh, as it relates to the building. If you wanted to rebid it, uh, and I don't know that you do, and I don't know that we want you to, but I don't. I'm not as concerned about fabrication as it relates to the building, and I'm not as concerned about permitting as it relates to the building, as long as the footprint remains essentially the same, its location is essentially the same, and the function is essentially the same. I think that, in my opinion, could constitute a minor change to the permits that you have in hand and could be done administratively without revisiting all of your permits. Those okay. are my comments. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Six point five um, would be to discuss any next steps or actions related to the award of bids, final budget acceptance, and proposed funding plan. Um, so as we um, all know, we're not in a position right now to um, give specifics in regard to dollars. We've got some fundraising to do. Um, we've got to look at the bids and um, move forward. So you know what, Ray? I do think you're right. We should probably plan another meeting for you guys. Um, school committee probably. Yeah, I, I, I do think that it's important to schedule another meeting yeah. because while we hope we'll have more information by next Monday night, we're not going to have it all. What I might suggest doing, because that will be four meetings in a row, four yeah. weeks in a row, is to meet the 13th and not the 20th. In other words, uh, our change our schedule. Um, that would still leave the 20th if something additional came up. Um, well, if we're just talking about this one item, I don't mind having a special meeting the 13th and keep the 20th. I don't know what the agenda item is. Well, I think the there, there are several items, though, that are still outstanding. This, it, the bid award is certainly one, but even prior to that, uh, an approved budget, um, this issue of the fundraising um, number and, and voting on um, accepting those dollars that there are likely to be a, a bunch of items and not just uh, yeah. not just one. Well, I think we should so. schedule the 13th regardless because it seems like we need it. Everybody else okay with that? I agree. Yeah, and yeah then, I agree. To schedule the 13th yeah. and then we may we, not we, need the 20th. Okay. Will everybody be here? Yep. I will be here. <laughs> well, I, I might not be here. Oh. <laughs> I might not be we here. You may be here to where I can be sitting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, assuming I, I actually You'll have something here, right? that night, but I, I would miss it if yeah. I. Okay. We're both assuming if one of us is going to be here. <laughs> okay. Um, you also received, I think, electronically a copy of the um, grant agreement between us and the CPC. Mm -hmm. um, Ray had some great edits to it. And I'm very happy to sign this agreement between school committee and CPC, and I'm very thankful for that committee being one of the first ones to step up to the plate and support this project. Okay. And um, I'm very happy that they had all their projects approved at town meeting also, including the yes. Heritage Museum. So um, here you go. I do have two copies, one original for uh, CPC and one to be part of our records. So thank you. Thank you. That was <coughs> So there's some money. <laughs> we can apply that to the budget. It's okay. in the budget. It's already in, it's in the, the budget. Yeah, all right. Double count. Double count. Double count. count. <laughs> that one was voted. The I bonus might be if we get that grant. The grant. For the yes. for exactly. field turf. When What's do we the timeline on that? They uh, said sometime in May. Yeah. I think they said it, May. it happens pretty quickly. Yeah. What was the amount? 50. 50. Okay. <laughs> hey. I don't know. It's great. 6.7 is to receive information regarding an overnight field trip. Of four students in grades 10 and 12 to World right. Challenge. That's the same World Challenge program that has been to Vietnam and where else have they have they been? Uh, India. India. Yeah. Um, and so it's a great program. It's a small group this year. Uh, I also would give credit to uh, 
three or four of our staff members who um, some who were here planned for two years to go on the trip and then um, left our employee mm -hmm. and other but other people stepped up to the trade uh, to the plate and this is not an insignificant trip either in terms of a level of commitment it's not a vacation it's not a tour trip it's a working trip uh, and usually under very difficult uh, conditions in terms of climate and humidity and all those things so so I'm very pleased that um, the people have stepped up in each instance when someone has moved on so that the kids could have the experience that they had planned for so do you know who, who will be attending this trip? Um, I think it's Christina. Kind of like Christy, I think it's, uh, it's on the sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't she go on the one, the last trip? Um, not sure who went on the, the last one. Ellen started them, and then I Dana. I think she did, did right? Yeah. yeah. I thought she stepped in the And then Dana did one, uh, and, uh, and now we have uh, So what was the... the um, I'm not familiar with it, so is it the criteria? Was it was it something where people applied, or was it a certain study group? Or well, uh, they they apply in the sense of expressing an interest, and then it takes about two years to do all the fundraising um, that is required for it, and it's about a three week, it's a long trip, um, and um, and there's a work component, um, things like uh, helping to build an orphanage, that kind of thing. Um, so these students don't come from a particular class or major? Or Not a particular no. club, no. It would be open to anyone. The other groups have been larger yeah. groups. But. Okay. Uh, 6.8, 6.9, and 6.10 are to receive notifications of resignations. We wish them well. And then seven other items not reasonably known in 48 hours. Do you want to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Uh, I would move that we engage the firm Garrity and Nisley and specifically Bob Garrity uh, to serve as project counsel for the Hingham High School uh, Fields Project Phase 2 at a, uh, a rate and terms to be determined by mutual agreement. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Ray, building committee report? I have nothing. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I've been busy with other things. All right. Subcommittee reports? None. Superintendent's report? Um, I left a number of things at, at your place tonight. One is um, uh, report number three in terms of the <coughs> kindergarten um, enrollment, and that number is continuing to climb. Um, so this projection has next year's kindergarten at um, 290 at the moment, but I'm not in a total panic <laughs> yet because um, if you look at the chart down near the bottom where it is row F, which is the total number of kindergarten packets distributed. When we uh, do our projections, we make the assumption that anyone who bothered to come and pick up a packet would in fact return it. So when I do the projection, I look at the number of packets distributed, the number of anticipated kindergarten repeaters in each of the school, and that becomes the projection for that building. So that's where the 290 comes from. However, you can see that if you compare row F and row G, in row F, um, we have the packets that were distributed. In row G, the packets that have been returned. And you'll notice that in two of the buildings, there are about 10 that we need to confirm. Uh, the secretaries are busy looking at um, making phone calls to clarify these numbers. But in fact, um, there are some outstanding ones. So. If all of those packets that are outstanding were re returned, we would be at the 290. In two of the buildings, those numbers are already pretty close, so there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Um, and uh, the 290 uh, last year, or went in September, this year's kindergarten was 257. So there's a big difference between 257 and, and 290. And you can see what the breakdowns would be. The numbers in parentheses next to each building indicate how many sections we have 
and therefore how many teachers uh, we have for the current year in both kindergarten and grade one. We're uh, looking as well at an anticipated 48 additional first graders in September than we have now in kindergarten. That's been a number that's large, but it's not as large as it was this year, but there's still time for that to grow. So um, just more food for thought. Uh, Ellen and I will meet with the elementary principals on the 14th, and then we will talk about how many sections of what we will have and, uh, and how many uh, additional FTEs we may or may not need. Uh, we're meeting uh, on the 10th with the secondary uh, principals and the directors to go through a similar kind of exercise. So. Um, but the numbers there. Dot, could I interrupt you for a moment? Um, we've been joined by our state representative, Garrett Bradley. Uh, he wanted to make a special presentation. Yes, um, first of all, excuse my attire. I have just finished coaching my son's game over at uh, Lynch One, which the lace didn't go on, thank God. So the game stopped early. <laughs> <laughs> I've been at that field for 34 years, and it, you know, it, gets, it went from 70 to 40 right away, but, uh, and Senator Headland couldn't be here, so I figured I'd dress like him. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to come, because it's Carol's last meeting, so I wanted to thoroughly embarrass her, because as you know, tomorrow is election day, everybody don't forget, um, and we will have some new members, but uh, what I wanted to do was read a citation from the House of Representatives that, that says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincere congratulations to Carol Falvey and recognition of your six years of dedicated, I should put free service to the yeah. town of Hingham <laughs> and the Hingham Public Schools as a member of the Hingham School Committee. It's signed by the Speaker of the House, Bob DeLeo, on your last day in office, April 29th, and myself, State Rep. Garrett Bradley. Congratulations, Carol. Uh -huh. Thank you for letting me interrupt. Thanks, students. That's good to know. Donald will be calling me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess I'll have to hang this up next to the high school diploma we're going to get in a few weeks, too. <laughs> um, the other thing that I handed out tonight is a, uh, a report that came from the MASS, that's the Superintendent's Association, uh, lobbyist. Uh, they keep us up to date on what's going on at, uh, at the State House, and in particular with respect to the budget and with respect to the um, Ways and Means uh, Agreement that came last night. So, so what you have is a memo that is from the Superintendent's Association, but actually um, it is a summary of what happened last week. And um, I did send you all an email the other day that said there is uh, an amendment there that may benefit us, uh, in particular, in terms of some additional money for security. I think we all will feel more comfortable when the whole thing is voted and the governor has signed it. But it is good news that there may be some additional dollars uh, facilitated by Garrett. Um, to uh, help us with some security that we were not going to be able to fund within our um, operating FY14 operating budget. So on the front of that um, memo that I gave you, there are two numbers, and they are the numbers that are the total Chapter 70 <coughs> aid that would be coming to Hingham. Uh, that's 6,335,052. And then another category of state aid, which is called unrestricted uh, local aid. That's the one three six six four two eight. So that's a total of seven million seven hundred one thousand four hundred eighty dollars. So, and uh, I haven't compared it exactly with what was in um, Ted's forecast budget, the most recent one, but it's in that it's in that neighborhood. This particular memo doesn't say anything about the extra $25 per student, so I don't know the, uh, the status there, but it does suggest that uh, they have added some money to the METCO budget and they have added some dollars to the uh, circuit breaker budget, and we don't have our own allocations in either of those things yet, but, but some good news coming from, uh, from the State House as well. That's great. You all did get an invitation to the uh, Century Club. Century Club mm -hmm. banquet uh, at South Shore Country Club, and this is where the top 25 students in each class, 25 is designated by the unweighted uh, uh, 
rank, and uh, it's always a very nice event. It's a dinner, and um, kids receive uh, some certificates. It's very well organized, um, and so it moves along quickly. Uh, and typically as a speaker, I haven't heard this year who the speaker would be, but it would be important um, that you RSVP if it's something you're interested in uh, attending. And just send it over to Paula or give it to me and we'll put it in the inter-office mail uh, for her. Okay. That's it. Well, I'd like to note the three chairs for school nurses article on the back. I thought that was really... The what? The three chairs for school nurses. Oh, yes. That's a great little article. It was a very nice letter. just came along, although it was written some time ago, I think, but, uh, but I just got it the other day. Okay. I believe we have reason to move into executive session. Uh, I need a motion. All right. Before we get to a motion, we just would like to present you, Carol, with some flowers over here. Thank you very well, I much. I was wondering who those flowers were from. <laughs> <laughs> from all of us. From Thank you very much for your leadership, your patience, and all the time that you've sacrificed on behalf of the kids. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's still time to, uh, to put a write-in campaign in place. You know. <laughs> <laughs> have fun in Bermuda. I will. That, thank you, Paul, for taking me to Bermuda. Mm -hmm. But it's been, um, it's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot. You're a great group. I think we have a great central office staff. And, um, I really have truly learned a lot from the three of you, that's for sure, and enjoyed working with all of you. So thank you very much. If I could just, before we go to executive session, Tomorrow's an election. There's no certainty in the end result. So in the event that I don't get reelected, I'd like to thank you all for my three years uh, and really enjoyed working with you and hope to be able to continue. Does that mean I have to do the same thing now? No pressure. I'll give you the same air time. <laughs> well, <laughs> think positive. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's been a very great three years, and hopefully I'll be back for another and uh, enjoy working with everyone and hope to continue. Great, great. Yeah. All right, now I'll take a motion to move into executive session. Uh, I'll, I'll move that we, uh, that we go to executive session to discuss, discuss matters uh, related to potential litigation. Um, do I need to say more than that? Not to return. Oh, not to return to open session. And that we would meet in our office so the camera folks can get Clean out. Correct. So, yeah. I need a second. Second. All in favor? We, we have, have to do, do this individually. 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 So. Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, where are we going to move to? We're going to uh, Dr. Gallo's office. <laughs> it's easier. We're on a table now.